Tame Tamer, Tom Ert Witness One, and today we are going to discuss No Trace and Hypocrites. And the first subject of this uh, mobile time today is going to be No Trace. Now, recently uh, someone had made a comment on Twitter uh, as to the effect that there was a rumor that a certain individual who has not been seen or heard from for the better part of seven months was recently spotted in a suburb of Denver, Colorado, uh, living with a certain female individual that the missing person had been uh, associated with. And out of the blue, someone that we will refer to as Dr. T., Call him a liar. Said it's not true. Well, the question here is, how does Dr. T know this for a fact? Has this Dr. T been in contact with this individual? Does she have proof beyond a shadow of a doubt that this person is or is not in the state of Colorado? And if he is not in the state of Colorado, where the hell is he? Is he even still alive? You know, people come up with answers for things, and then they don't back up their answers with any kind of proof. And this gets us to the second half of my presentation, which is how people are hypocrites. And this is this is a multifaceted one, actually. Um, now, this individual wrote in a blog that I didn't check the right court for the documents that... I was looking for, stating that Chris Hallett had filed paperwork on his behalf. And he elaborated that that paperwork was, in fact, a bunch of arrest warrants. Now, there's a couple problems with this. First of all, Chris Hallett has no authority to file arrest warrants. He's not a law enforcement officer. At best, he is someone that operates operated a blog and a social media site where they discussed alternative interpretations of law. That does not give him the power to issue arrest warrants. Now, one thing that has been claimed about Mr. Hallett is he was this person that was a defense contractor and he was supposedly giving out some kind of uh, audits uh, to the government and through Congress and so on and so forth, and yet there is no proof of this. Nobody has come up with any proof that this man is who he claimed to be and who people claimed him to be. There is absolutely nothing anywhere that states that this person is a defense contractor or was. And so this is yet another example of people putting up things that they don't understand or cannot prove. And now we come to the next part of this hypocritical uh, bunch in some of the practices they engage in. And that is that for some unexplicable reason, they decided to put up a mugshot of an individual in Florida who uh, more than four years ago got into a minor bit of a trouble with the law and got himself charged with a minor offense. Now, when this mugshot was put up on the blog, they didn't bother to explain what the criminal charge is. They just kind of left it out there. And they also accused this person of being part of some child trafficking ring and criminal cabal and domestic terrorism and all this other bullshit, which is what these people do. When, in fact, if you go and check out what the charge is, it really isn't all that serious. And what's funny about the particular charge it's the same charge that was levied against the blogger. The exact same charge. And it was the Minnesota version of the Florida charge. And it was never explained how the blogger got that particular charge. So, you know, it's, this is hypocritical. He sits there and says, oh, this guy's got a criminal record, blah, 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 blah. But forgets that he's got his own criminal record. And in fact, he has a current one. 
the guy is a fugitive from justice. The guy has an arrest warrant out for him. If he steps foot in the state of Minnesota and is pulled over for a traffic stop or is stopped and asked for identification or for some reason is approached by a cop and they do a check on him, they're going to find he's got a warrant for his arrest and he will be arrested on the spot. And so that's very hypocritical of him and those around him. But, you see, this is how these people operate. They have to guess like people. They have to come up with a way to take our eyes off the ball. And they do it with these outlandish false charges. Now, this same blogger and those that support him have accused me of being a serial killer. I'm an alleged serial killer in the eyes of these idiots. Yet they've come up with no proof. There is no mugshot. There's no paperwork from any law enforcement agency being starting from local and working right up through the federal that says I have any kind of criminal record or charge or accusation of being a serial killer. These people just made this up out of their head. And you know this because there is no mugshot of me on there. Because I've never been arrested. I've never had a mud shot taken. I don't have so much as a parking ticket charged against me. Oh, I may have a moving violation for a mud flap that fell off my trailer, but that's the extent of it. So that's what's so hypocritical here. Is if you go back and look at the writings of these people. Now, this is this one thing when they were attacking this guy. They say this guy lives with his grandmother in the basement. Well, apparently, for, for someone who claims she has property in Florida, she's never been to southeast Florida. Florida doesn't have basements. There's an obvious reason for that. Anybody that knows anything about Florida knows that in a majority of cases, houses do not have basements. So that's stupid on its face. And second of all, if the guy lives with his grandmother, so what? We have a married woman that for a while was shacking up with this guy who is not married. Uh, some people would call it adultery. Uh, other people would call it living with a uh, cougar. You know, but there's rather interesting hypocritical things being done here. Uh now, they pick on me because I live in a mobile home and the air conditioning doesn't happen to work. I do have a portable air conditioner in one bedroom, but the rest of the house isn't uh, heated. And it's an older mobile home. You know, I don't see the relevance. You know, I would rather be curious as to how many people out there live paycheck to paycheck, uh, earn the minimum wage or close to it, or perhaps live on either Social Security or maybe a veteran's pension. Uh, you know, are, is everybody out there that follows these QAnons and uh, the pitiful Pentagon Task Force and the uh, High Command, all wealthy people with, you know, all this money to spare that they can go around and pick on people that... Uh, are the minions out there that, you know, those of us who have jobs maybe don't get the highest pay in the world, or those of us who are on Social Security may not be able to afford a luxurious house, or the nice beautiful cars, or the trinkets and stuff like that. You know, is, you know, is this a, a class war we got going on here? Apparently it is. But this is what this is what's the priority. These people are more concerned about the income status of someone and where they live and how they live rather than things that matter, like the true cases of missing and exploited children, about the fact that their actions are putting the safety and security of their victims at risk, that they are inciting people out there to commit violence. Look at what happened with uh, Neely Blanchard, for instance. Someone or something put it in this woman's head that Chris Hallett not only was able not able to procure her children, but in fact was actively working against her. She said as much, allegedly, when she executed Mr. Hallett. And 
So, was she, was somebody deliberately feeding her this information to anger her to the point that she would kill this man? Was it an unexpected result of their going after this woman and saying, Hey, Chris Hallett did not want you to have your kids back. He was working to make sure that did not happen. Now, there could be any number of motivations for saying this. Maybe it was said by a woman who was after Hallett as a uh, love interest, and she got threatened by the fact that Mr. Hallett was getting closer and closer with this Neely Blanchard. And thus she tried to get Neely Blanchard angry enough to where she would not pursue Mr. Hallett anymore and that her plan backfired and Mr. Hallett wound up getting killed. Hard to tell with this screw. You know, it's a theory. There's no proof. You know, maybe this stuff will come out in court. Who knows? Because there has to be a reason this woman went from being a devoted groupie for Mr. Hallett, supporting him in every way she could, to executing him. Something set this woman off. And the question is, what and why. And so we're going to be watching the court case for that one. But tomorrow night, as part of my murder thon at 9 p.m. Eastern on the 12th of December, we're going to get into this a little bit more. And I'm going to show a few documents. And I'm also going to answer the one question. And that has to do with these arrest warrants. Now, the, the blogger came out with a fact that, oh, no, this wasn't the Florida Circuit Court. This was the Florida Middle Court. Well, apparently, this person who has never been to Florida doesn't know how you find out which court is which. And it's a simple matter to look at the receipt that the blogger put up. If you take the exact wording that's on that receipt and you put it into a Google search, you are going to get the 5th District Court of Florida, which is a federal court. And it lists their telephone number and everything. And if you do a search, you will find that there is no current case filing in the Florida circuit. The only thing you find is filings that were made in the state of Ohio several years back. So again, I challenged the blogger and those around him to produce these arrest warrants, which the man has no legal right to make. Chris Hallett was not a law enforcement officer. He was a conspiracy theorist that ran some kind of weird law blog and webcast. He cannot file arrest warrants. He may want to put them in the court record, but they're not, they're meaningless. They're just a piece of paper with a bunch of words written on it that don't amount to anything. These people are known for this. They're, they're called vexatious litigants. They litigate stuff that's nonsense. Balderdash. Ridiculous. And the courts generally ignore them. They say, fine, you want to put that in the record? We'll put it in the record. Pay us your 400 bucks and we'll put it in there for you. But again, whatever Chris Hallett filed on the 2nd of November, there is no record that anybody can find, and there's a dozen people looking, that has anything to do with this particular individual. And certainly, there's no arrest warrants, or it would be in the court record. So, it's time to put up or shut up. Because I would love to see how this, why this man paid $400 of his hard-earned money this inventory clerk for AutoZone thought he had the justification to file an arrest warrant. And against whom? So let's all sit back and get the popcorn ready and the pop ready, or beer, whatever your favorite beverage is, and we'll wait and see if by tomorrow at 9 p.m. on Friday somebody shows up on the internet with the arrest warrants that Chris Hallett supposedly put out there. We'll all be winning. And so until then, this is William K. Murtaugh, Mert Windows 1. Please like, subscribe, share, and hit that notification button. And have a good one. The 12th of December, 